Acts 15, verse 1. A certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, I don't worry about that doctrine, but okay. Because this is Acts 15. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of the other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Now you understand, this is the writings of the ordinances. This is a chapter of the ordinances. This is where James wrote the ordinances. That some people think that James is a bad guy or he's, he shouldn't have done it or whatever because of the word enmity in the Ephesian letter and Colossian letter. This is not, it's not a bad thing. It's, it has to do with the transition between the Jews and all the things that are going on and the Jewish believers that had, still had some thoughts against the Gentiles. And Gentiles weren't doing anything. They didn't, they didn't celebrate or worship anything. So these ordinances were given to keep them happy. I guess that's the best way I can tell you, to keep them happy. So Paul and Barnabas went up to Jerusalem. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the, com the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Okay? Now, it wasn't that they wasn't happy they got saved. You see... You read that verse, right? The, the joy that the Gentiles are getting saved. They just don't like them. They ain't observing anything. They, see, the book of Acts, you can't teach the book of Acts for doctrine, folks. There's all kinds of things going on during this thing. And you'll get confused if you try to do this. But you can understand by what's going on that the Jews are happy that the Gentiles are getting saved. But they believe they are to do things. It's like somebody says, well, you've got to live godly. Well, I am godly in Christ, say, I mean, in Christ. And say, well, you've got to do this to be in the will of God. No, no, you don't have to be doing this in the will of God. But the Gentiles were being preached to by Paul from Acts 13 when he was separated. He began to preach. By this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all are justified, which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Bam, that throws up a flag right there. Okay. And the Jews that are trusting the Lord, they are to know better because Christ is the end of the law for righteous everyone that believeth. Right? Romans 10, 4. Mm -hmm. But they still, you know, they're not doing nothing. And one of the things that Jews loved about Gentiles was they give them money. Right? That's giving alms. And maybe some of these Gentiles ain't. Some of them are. Some of these Gentiles are have love unto the saints. And when you read this, matter of fact, I better do it. Romans. Let's see if I, no, I apologize. Ephesians. That's the one I want. <clears throat> Ephesians 1. Man, this food coming through the vent. And get Acts. Uh, now, Ephesians is good. Ephesians uh, 1, verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto what? Well, how'd they love them? Go up and kiss them and hug them? They're, they're, hurt, they're helping them, right? Uh, look at Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And, and when the spirit of a person, the spirit of the Lord comes into a person, this is something that's automatic till you quell it or quench it. Remember he said, quench not the spirit. This is what comes in a person. When they trust the Lord, that spirit of Christ comes in them. Look what it says. Can the spirit of Christ teach you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now watch what happens. See this again, this is choice. Verse 10, uh, uh, 9, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. But it's touching what? You need not that I write unto you, for yourself are taught of God to what? You see, that, that's something that comes in a person. Immediately when that Spirit of Christ comes in, 
then the teaching of the Spirit, go to uh, Galatians chapter uh, 5. See, that quenching of 1 Thessalonians is based on this thing. Uh, first, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. If the Spirit is in you, is there going to be fruit if you allow it? Yes. Okay, now watch. But the fruit of the Spirit is... Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, that means they have submitted to him for salvation, right? When you trusted the Lord, did you say he bought you? Yes. I mean, you didn't have to say that. That's what you're saying in your, in your belief. You bought me because that's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You're bought with a price, Okay. So once you trust the Lord, you have admitted to God, you bought me. I belong to you. Okay? Now, you still have the works of the flesh. If you didn't, you wouldn't have this treasure in an earthen vessel. You wouldn't have the earthen vessel. Why? The earthen vessel is nothing but sin. All right, now what? But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, uh, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh. So is that you have identified to the Lord, you bought me. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Mrs. Bearden's favorite verse. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. If Christ lives in you, can the fruit of the Spirit work? Okay? They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of lust. Would the flesh try to please God in religion? That's what they're doing. They're going to religion. Uh, I'll tell you the story. The JW that finished the building, we had it out. I mean, we had it out, and he didn't do nothing. I, I've never seen a man with a, the dumbest, emptiest look on his face that i ever seen. The Lord put about 25 verses on him just like that, and I said, oh, my God, I'm having a heart attack. And I've been over like that. I said, oh, my God, I'm dying. Please, I think I'm leaving this world. Tell me how to be saved. And he stood there like, and I said, oh, my God, it's getting worse. I'm dying. Help me. Tell me how to be saved. And I said, don't you ever canvas my neighborhood. You can't help me. I said, ain't you ashamed of yourself and your religion? You can't help me. I'm dying. You can't tell me how to be saved. And it was like, and I said, I'll see you later. I walked off because I'd give him the gospel. And I said, if our gospel be his, then we're lost. And he goes, the man was bumfounded. And he's a big time studier in that church. They does this. Had to go to Kingdom Hall. I asked him, I said, what do you believe? Said, what do you mean what I believe? I said, tell me what you believe. Well, I mean, we're going to the kingdom. I said, the kingdom never was promised to you. Gave him verses after that. <laughs> kept on, kept on. Finally, he's just standing there going, I said, ain't you ashamed of yourself that you'd put your stock in something that can't help nobody? Folks, understand these people can't help you. You can. You have the fruit of the Spirit. You have the knowledge, the understanding of God. Can you make your choice? I was reading this morning in Acts chapter 5, Peter and then was put in jail. They're put in jail for what they're preaching. <coughs> Angel come in there. Open the dang door. Wouldn't that be an event? Angel come, open the door, say, get out. You're free. Now, what would you do if you were in jail there and free? Tell me what you'd do. What? <laughs> they went out and preached and got caught again. Choice. And he said, they told him, he said, didn't we tell you not to be talking about that man and what you're saying? 
And Peter said, ought we obey men or God? That's a choice, folks. That's a choice. What would you do? They started persecuting you for what you believe. Would you run and hide? How many of your friends have you truly witnessed to, hard and heavy, wanting them to be saved, truly wanting them to be saved, and they just love you to death? Folks, there got to be something different about the Word of God in a person than it ain't in a person. Because that person ain't got the Word of God persecute you. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. You make a choice. So in Galatians, but now watch in verse 25. Here's your walk. Do you live in Christ? In the Spirit? Okay. Look what the verse is going to tell you. What does it say? What does it say, George? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Well, what would the Spirit have? What would be the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, joy. Absolutely. I change the attitude. You know, you go to the chiropractor and get an attitude adjustment, right? That's, I mean, a bone adjustment. Well, here. Uh, by the way, I want to show you something. Ephesians chapter 4. What if you're an ill-tempered knucklehead like me? I got a hair trigger. Not with people, things. I can't stand something that don't work. It aggravates fool out of me. I, if it's made to do that and it don't do it, that makes me upset, and I go after China. <laughs> well, most likely it came from China. <laughs> what if Ephesians chapter 5 affected you with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 being done to you? Now, my neck hurts, my back hurts. What do I, who do I go to? Chiropractor. Now what's he doing? What is he actually doing? Of course, doctors don't believe this. He's actually putting your spine in better shape. Your spine is disheartening you folks. I'm telling you right now, if your spine is out or being pinched, you're in misery. If you never had a back ache or a leg ache or a sciatic, you don't know until you get it, buddy. I mean, when your back is out, you got serious problems. You're limping around everybody. What's the matter? You I don't feel good. So he takes and he turns you and he twists you. And what he's doing is twisting them spines back where they're not pinching the nerves and not getting that squeeze on that, the, what do you call that, disc? Disc. Okay? When you got saved, you know how really bad you were? Greg Knight, you got saved. What are you, how have you been living? That's right, me neither. <laughs> Touched, tasted, and handled. The only thing I ain't never been is a queer. <laughs> I've been a lesbian all my life. <laughs> Love women. <laughs> Touched, tasted, and handled. No. That wasn't in my vocabulary. Touch, taste, and handle not. That was not not. It was yay. Okay? So God saved an ungodly sinner and enemy. All right? When Paul wrote the Corinthian letter about charity, it is charity. It is not love. It is charity. He's presenting to that group of people that you might as well get ready. God's fixing to bring in some people that you are not going to approve of. And that began when Paul turned from the Jews in Acts 28. He said, Lo, I turned to the Gentiles. He'd been going to Gentiles all along. But this time he said, Lo, I turned to the Gentiles. You're out of luck. And the Ephesian and Colossian letter are the epitome of 1 Corinthians 13 because prophecy shall fail. The people that are going to get saved from then on have no prophecy. Tongues shall cease. Folks, don't you understand why the devil's pushing tongues in these churches? It ceased. He don't want it. 
to cease because if God says it, he ain't going to believe it for anybody. Okay? And so God began to save people that are absolutely no good. Well, the first Gentiles were no good, but they were keeping ordinances. James wrote them. He said, we got to keep these people happy. You characters don't do nothing. They wrote the order, and he said, if you do, you'll do well. He didn't say nothing about salvation. It had nothing to do with salvation. The handwriting orders have never had to do anything with salvation. It had to do with separation. George just read there that if, if you live in the Spirit, you should do what? Walk in the Spirit. Okay? Now, what's the fruit of the Spirit? Man, all them things you don't like. <laughs> That's not your nature. You live in a racist town. Or are you saying they ought, they ought not be saved? You live in a racist religion of the United States. If you're not a bad, if you're not a JW. You're out. They believe that. If you're a JW and you don't do what they say, they'll blackball you. Seventh day Adventists do the same thing. Mennonites, Amish, they do the same thing. The Mormons call us uh, infidels, uh, no, uh, uh, Gentiles, when they're Gentiles. The uh, Arabians call us infidels. Why? Because we don't agree with what they have chose to follow. Ephesians chapter 4. All right, you in there that Kyle first said, now this is gonna hurt you worse than this me. Crack! My neck, it just kills me to have my neck because I've got a bad neck, and when he does it, I tense up and then it really hurts. Mm -hmm. You need to let go. The best thing to do is take about a half a quarter moonshine and he can adjust you. It really works better. Get <laughs> crack it up, buddy. But he's adjusting you. Do you know the word in verse 12 of Ephesians 4? That's perfecting. For the perfecting of who? The, the All the saints that go in the body have to be perfected. They have to be adjusted to accept. Accept what the God is doing. You see, if God says it, you know what you're going to have to do? Accept. You're going to have to accept it, whether you like it or not. Say, well, I just don't like them people in that church because they believe they're forgiven. Well, it's because God said we are. I'm not teaching you you're forgiven because I just want to say it. You are forgiven. But they don't like that. Why? Because that doesn't go along with their rules of warfare. You're not just accepted. What are you telling me? You can just be saved, secured, no matter who you are or what you do. Yeah. That's how it works. For the perfecting of saints, for the work of what? The what? The ministry. The ministry. For the edifying of who? Who was that? Well, that's the gifts of verse 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. So my job for you as a pastor and teacher is to perfect you. Now, we think of the word perfect as making it totally and completely right, right? That's exactly what that chiropractor is doing. He's making your spine right so that all the blood flows, all the nerves work, Everything, and what a creation of God. All them nerves and them little veins went through them little holes when you conceived and started going to where they were supposed to go out, the end of your fingers and everything else, the end of your toes. Only God can do that from dirt. A magnificent God beyond understanding created from dirt and dirt 
is to try and to make it more better. Trying to make it more better. How can a dirt bag make it better? You let him. Now, why do I want to do that verse 12? Because I like the word 13, verse 1. Uh, 13, the first word, what is it? Till. What is a till? Earl, what's a till? How about time? You're going to put up with me till you can get to the food. <laughs> it's coming through the vent, and you're saying, shut up, Jerry. Let's eat. Till we come to the food. Everybody's looking, Leon, some roast beef is back there. We got to get back there. Till Jerry shuts up. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Somebody around you is not saved. You know you know? You're still here, ain't you? Somebody around you is not saved. Have you told them how? Don't you, I'm telling you, you have seen that dumbfounded look. It was like, and it's like, he's just looking at me and saying, just die anyway. I don't know how. I wonder what he done if I just fell down and kicked like Fred Sanford. Oh, Martha, I'm coming to you. Tell me, just standing there like, no answer. Well, if he ain't got no answer, he ain't got no answer. Do you? Can you tell somebody how to be saved? Do you? Do you get up in the morning and say, Lord, please let me witness somebody today. Please let me tell somebody I know how to be saved. Or do you get up in the morning and never even think about it? That same day I had three good witnesses that day of three different people. Boy, it was a good day that day. And one of them, when I got done, she said, you're about to make me cry. I never heard it before. Isn't that great? One dumped out and one's about ready to cry. That's tremendous. So, go back with me to Acts 15 and watch. Now, this same man that was in jail in Acts 5, he's out here roaming around telling everybody what the Lord taught him. He made a choice. All right, now look at verse 7. Acts 15, 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know that how that God, a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now if you start looking up Peter, he never tells them they are saved. He tells them shall be. Fair enough? So, who's he talking about here in verse 7? Go to Acts 10. Peter got up one morning and said, Oh my God, I think I'll go to the Gentiles. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> He's been told not to go to them. He don't like them. He's never been around Gentiles. He don't eat their food. He don't touch their stuff. He's an Orthodox Jew. Folks, you're not supposed to touch hogs, eat bacon, anything like that. He, he's not done that. He, he's never eaten anything common or unclean. Okay? So in Acts chapter 10, verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that... He's a devout Gentile. That's kind of unusual, ain't it? A devout Gentile, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Did they like him? Some of them Jews probably liked him, didn't they? Okay. Now he gets a vision. And this vision <clears throat> says, what to this, verse 4, 
And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. How about that? All his life, from the point we can read, he feared God. Why? He's seen the things going on in the book of Acts. He's seen the wonders and signs. Was Jesus a man approved to God by miracles, wonders, and signs? Acts 2. Then did they continue on with signs, wonders, and everything? And he saw it. And I guarantee if that wouldn't put fear in your eyes, I don't know what would. Unless you don't fear. Do you realize when Paul was separated, the first message, he said, you that fear God... Did you fear God the day you was getting saved? Or did you just hear the gospel of your salvation? You ever thought about that? Maybe nobody preaching hellfire and brimstone to you. They wasn't preaching to you that if you don't get it right, God will kill you. Blah, blah, blah. You heard the gospel of your salvation and you believed it. Because that's what it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. And it's called the gospel of peace. Are you with me? The first people that Paul preached to, they feared God. Why? The signs and wonders. Don't you understand the difference in you is that you didn't see the signs and wonders and believed anyway? You ever think about that? You didn't see all them signs and wonders. But you believed God anyway. And once you believed, the love unto the, all the brethren put in you. You don't have to be taught of God. It's the Spirit because of the fruit of the Spirit. Now watch this. Hold on to uh, Acts 10 and go to Ephesians. I was talking to him today about, you know, live peaceably with all men as much as life in you. Why don't you put a little more in you? And you'll live peaceably. Say, some people won't let you live peaceably. Walk away. Just get away from them. Avoid them. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. What should you do? Verse 15. See then you walk how? Let's cut away from that old man and his intentions and knowledge. Okay? Arise. Uh, I'll pause it. See you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming what? The time. Because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What do you think the will of the Lord is in your life? Number one, you know it's to be saved. What's the will of the Lord in your, in your mind, in the scripture? What's the will of the Lord? Now that's the first thing. All right, what else? First Thessalonians chapter 5. I would say my wife is a great epitome of this. She's happy every day. And the only thing that brings her down is other people. And she tries not to let them. But she's happy all the time. She's happier than a pig in a mud wallow. But now watch. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Is this your nature? Now that you're a child of God. Is this the way you're walking? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Is this the way you're walking? Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil. <clears throat> I knew some men that hopefully they got the truth. A lot of them are dead now. Not all excited. Uh, this one, not, the one's not dead. But he was cooking shrimp at the conference. Everybody's so excited going to conference. They just come by the loads come to the conference. Man, it wasn't nothing to have four or five hundred people at a conference. Had children all over the place, everything. They were all happy about it, enjoyed it, man. A man come in and started preaching, supposedly a grace preacher. The next thing I know, they're building arms up for the tribulation. And I asked one of them, I said, what you going to kill in the tribulation? 
well, you know, and they stopped. And I said, well, well, what do you plan on killing them troopers? Why are you building up arms? Well, to protect. Protect you from what? You need arms to not take the mark of the beast? <laughs> Honestly, think about it. Why would you need to build up arms for the tribulation? Why, no! <laughs> and they all left the assembly. And one of them went being the Baptist again. Now, why did they do that? Because some man wasn't perfecting them. He was hurting them. Subtly being led by another spirit. <clears throat> I mean, why would I want to go into tribulation? And why would I think building up arms would save me in the tribulation? I, where is that in Revelation? Thou that has the most guns wins. <laughs> I don't think so. Or you'll be able to withstand the Antichrist and the wicked one when he comes with your arms. You're going to stand against the devil with a machine gun? He'd pop you like a tick. My goodness. Say, well, I'm going to withstand when the New World, One Order, and all that comes. They can shoot you from 100 miles off, and you don't even know where it come from. They can look at you from the satellite, pull that thing down, and read your belt buckle right now, and you're going to protect yourself. You better take the reality of the Bible and know that if you get killed for your witness, or if you die... You have been released. You get to go with the Father. God wanted you to come to Him, but He left you here with a treasure in earth and vessels that you might be able to witness to the next soul coming along. Let Him direct thy path to that soul that needs the truth that you have. Don't just come in here and sit and get the truth and never use it. You're the vessel. The vessels of God. And that treasure is in our earthen vessel. Say, well, it cost you. Make your choice. Will I obey God or men? He says, uh, see, 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow after that which is what? How do I follow what is after good? Let's watch, let's read this. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Somebody asked me the other day, why are you riding a motorcycle? That's dangerous. You get killed on it. Well, plan on your car trip. When the semi hits you head on and you say, oh my God, I ain't on a motorcycle. I can't get hurt. Take that spider off of you. That one with that little hourglass on it bites you. The next thing you know, you're in the hospital on a ventilator. Or you get pneumonia. Or you get some weird disease, and the next thing you know, you're dead. I can't help but think about my Tatum. Healthy, my God. Walk three or four miles a day. Health is a bull. Bam! Why'd he do that? Because it's the way of life. I wanted once for men to die after this judgment. There's a time to be born and a time to die. But in between there, you redeem the time. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave me his over. He gave it to me to live. I don't mind. I can't hide from dying. You can't hide from it, folks. The grim reaper's around. I don't know what he needs that sickle for, but he gets on with it, don't he? Wouldn't you rather be dying for the Lord than for your TV or your junk that ain't going with you anyway? Ain't nothing you got taking with you. Say, well, we get to take our clothes? Nah, don't need it. 
get a new body. What do you want in life? Do you want somebody else to be saved? It's the will of God. He said, verse uh, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How much should you rejoice? Always. Always. Father tells his daughter, Don't you go all the way. What does that mean? You can't go no farther. No. There's a point you can't go no farther, right? Well, there's a point you can't go no farther. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation, that's your yieldingness. Moderation is a yieldingness. And it's true, a buffet was not for yieldingness. Moderation. A buffet was there to make you just want all you want to get more. You ever had anybody bump you in the back at a buffet bar? Trying to push you on and go, what the hell's wrong with you? It ain't going to run out. <laughs> that just, come on, man. See how that stack of plates? You can come back. Oh, my God. Let your moderation, the moderation is the Lord's with you. Does he dwell in you? Does the Lord dwell in you? Yes. Then let him do the work. The work of the Lord, the work of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, all those things. And a soft answer turneth away wrath. I appreciate Dana saying what she did to me yesterday when she called me. She said, you know, if I hadn't learned what I did in church, I would be in misery right now about my brother. She said, I'm fine. Blade's going to be with the Lord when he dies. I said, precious in the eyes of the Lord the death of his saints. It's a release. It's saying, you're done, my friend. You face the world no more. You face the evil one no more. I've got you. I've got you back. Meditate on those. Now watch. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, or finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Where do you find things that are true? The Word of God. That's right. He said, be ye filled with the Spirit. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. Do you consider that leg in front of you as lovely? 100%. Absolutely. I, uh, one of the scary things to me is losing my Bible. I had a little Bible one time. Bro Moore gave it to me. It was a, it's a pastor's Bible. He wrote in it. He wrote me a story in it about the card game. And I had it in my pocket and I was mowing one day. And later on I couldn't find it. I thought, oh my God. I cut it up or something happened. And I didn't know where it was. And I went for a couple months and had a funeral to do and I, a lot of times I used it on a funeral because I put it in my pocket. And I prayed about it. I said, Lord, I know it's kind of a silly thing. I know it's just a paper. But it was given to me by a man I love. So whatever happened to that thing? No answer. One day I went out and got on the lawnmower to mow. And I was going to check the wall. Look down there and there it is. And it ain't destroyed. It's just been laying there. And I picked it and I said, Lord, thank you. For that was very valuable to me. Not only is it your word, it came from a man I loved. The Lord is merciful. And when things aren't looking too good, don't run and hide. Be careful for nothing. The Lord is at hand. And he'll take care of you. May not be the way you think. Supplication, let it be known. May not come the way you supplicate, but it'll come the way the Lord knows best. Do I trust the Lord for salvation? Yes. Do I trust Him to know best? Yes, I do. Do I trust Him to not forsake? Yes, I do. Do I trust Him to know to the end and the everlasting? Yes, I do. 
He said, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. You understand, you go back to your pattern, and you look at that pattern, and that pattern one day got up, went on the road, he persecuted people, and all of a sudden the Lord appeared to him, and in that appearing began a process of visions and revelations to where he can tell you what you have, what God will do for you and did for you and will do for you, and your end results is eternity. Not temporal, eternity. And all this stuff down here is all temporal. Stress and strain and getting it right and keeping it right and hope it works out, blah, blah, blah. We got it up in the bank. We got enough of this. Will my car hold up? Will my battery discharge with the lights on? It'll all be there. I'll take care of it. God is almighty. It's your choice.